Today we're going to have a look at how to do a relative compression test using my Buick and a two-channel Pico scope. So I've got a Pico 2204A here. These ones are about $250. They're probably the least expensive way to get into oscilloscopes as far as getting anything half decent. There are some cheaper ones out there. However, I really recommend the Pico because their software suite is absolutely phenomenal. So what I have set up here, to do just the basic relative compression test, all you need is a single channel. Uh, we wanna get into, the reason that I recommend two channel lab scopes is so that we can identify which cylinder is which. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you the basic relative compression test. So I have channel A set up on my negative and my positive battery, and it is going to measure alternating current that gets kicked off by the starter. Not the cleanest way to do it, but if you don't have an amp clamp, which is a relatively expensive tool, I still want you to be able to do this test because it's a pretty useful, quick test. Now on channel B, I have hooked up my amp clamp. So I simply have a set of cables that allowed me to connect my amp clamp and set it to my multimeter. I'm connected into my scope. I have my amp clamp set to 400 amps and my output in that range is one millivolt per amp. So if I'm kicking off on this 200 millivolts, that means my starter's drawing 200 amps. So my amp clamp is going to go around my negative battery cable. However, before I do that, I wanna make sure that I've zeroed it. So I've got on my left there, my blue trace is my voltage, and then my red trace right here at zero is my amperage from my amp clamp. So the way that I've set my scales up here, my amp clamp is set up on a one volt scale, and I'm not gonna kick off nearly that much, so I could even drop that down to uh, half of a volt. I have my time set to two seconds per division, so every one of these uh, grid markers here is going to be two seconds, so I'll be able to graph a nice nice amount of time. And then on channel A, I'm set up at two volts AC. So let's have a look at what, how we do this. Amp clamp zeroed, goes around all of my negative cables on my battery. Doesn't matter if my positive was easier to get to, I could do that too, just has to go around all of our cables. And I'm gonna head into the vehicle. Uh, some vehicles, you have to get into the fuse box and you disable the fuel system because if the vehicle starts, it's not going to work for a relative compression test. Now, after going through all of my fuses here, all of my fuses in the trunk, realize that this particular vehicle doesn't have a fuel pump relay or a fuel pump fuse. However, this vehicle has what is called clear flood mode, which is really convenient. All I need to do is hold my throttle at wide open. I'm gonna get into my vehicle and crank it. Now I'm just gonna let my waveform get to the start of my screen. Throttle is all the way down. Cranking the vehicle. Now you don't wanna go for a super long time. 30 seconds of cranking time, you would need to let the starter rest for two minutes. But I wanna go for at least 10, 15 seconds so that if there is some type of intermittent issue, I'm gonna pick it up. So now I'm gonna go back over to my computer here. Stop, go back in the waveforms. And here is, here's my waveform. Here's my relative compression test. So remember, my amperage that the starter is drawing is the red, and then the alternating current, because the starter is applied DC current, but remember it's an armature and brushes, so as it's rotating, it's kicking off some alternating current, and that's what we're reading here. So let's zoom in and have a look to see what's going on. How could you be so irresponsible? It's my first day. Now, I've inverted my waveforms because I just like looking at them this way. This is how I was trained. But if you prefer having them natural because it is drawing voltage away from the battery and now we're producing it here. And with the amperage, it is drawing amperage out, it's not making amperage. Uh, it do doesn't matter, it's however you're comfortable looking at it. So I'm just gonna re-invert this here again, because that's how I like to look at it. Cool. Okay, so let's zoom in. 
at the beginning, the waveform is going to consume a fair amount of voltage because it takes some effort to get that engine moving over. But what I am looking at would be this part here. So I'm looking at the peaks and the valleys of my waveforms. So what I see there is compression. And this is the compression every time the engine turns over. So when I look at each hump, I have a six cylinder engine, and I'm just gonna pick one at random here. I'll pick this one right here. And I go over six humps, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm just gonna go into the valleys of those humps, so I have a complete um, exhaust compression, exhaust compression, exhaust compression, exhaust compression. So every time the starter is turning over, these peaks, the higher amperage draw from the starter, is when we're under compression. Now, I want these to all be relatively close, which I have a little bit of noise there, and then I, I can clean that up. If I go into this channel on a higher end scope, it will look a little bit nicer right out of the box. Here, I can just enhance my resolution to get a bit cleaner of an image. You just have to be careful because if you enhance it too much, it is going to reduce a portion of the waveform. Like it'll it'll get rid of detail. So I'm pretty happy with this right here. And now I can see that for the most part, most of my cylinders are pretty, pretty even. Uh, I do have a little bit less in one of them there. That's pretty neat. But there's nothing there that really concerns me. Now if I had one that was right missing part of it or missing half of it, then I would go have a look at that. So my blue line here, that's my alternating current. You can see that that's not quite as clean of a signal as taking the amperage. However, if you don't have an amp clamp, they're not cheap, uh, that's a pretty good way of doing a relative compression test with fewer tools.